Hello, my name is Wade Demer, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. Recently, Santa Barbara area has had a well, milestone. We've hit the 100-year mark, and with this, we're celebrating this with George Goodall and Bill Dutton, who will be joining me. They're from the Rotary Club of Santa Barbara, and we brought them in to actually share the experience of what the first 100 years has been like. So, George, I'm going to start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a fifth-generation Southern Californian. <laughs> My great-grandfather came out here in a gold rush and stayed and liked it. <laughs> Great. Good for you. But anyway, I grew up on a ranch in the west end of the San Fernando Valley mm -hmm. and studied agriculture at UCLA. I'm an uh, endangered species since they don't have the College of Agriculture at UCLA anymore. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> that's where I graduated. Great. My interest is in citrus and avocados. And I became farm advisor here mm -hmm. in Ventura, Santa Barbara, and San Luis Obispo County is concentrating on tree crops okay. and had 40 years with the University of California as a farm advisor. Wow. And since then, I've been doing agricultural consulting, and I've been kind of all over the world <coughs> advising people on avocado culture. Okay. So, so a more specific avocado then was kind of your... Uh, well, that's what more thing. people were interested in. They didn't know anything about them. <laughs> you know, the avocado industry started here in Southern California and in the 1920s. And that was the first time commercially sold avocados occurred. Okay. And we've taken it from there in just, you know, these short years, <laughs> less than 100 years. That's true. Very true. So tell us a little bit mm. about how you got involved with Rotary. Excuse me? How did you get involved with Rotary? Well, I had re refused service clubs. Several had invited <laughs> me to come because I thought my customers, so to speak, my clients, <laughs> for my work as a farm advisor were the farmers, the agriculturalists, mm -hmm. and not the people in town in the Rotary Clubs. But there was a member of the downtown Santa Barbara Club, the, the old man's club as some people <laughs> call it, but the number one club in Santa Barbara, who was a farmer and a member of the Rotary Club. And he was about ready to retire. He said, George, we need some kind of a farmer left in that club. <laughs> So I want to propose you for a membership, and I couldn't uh -huh. say no to him. <laughs> that's so right. that's where I got started, 1965. 1965, wow, good for you. <laughs> Bill, how about you? Tell us a little bit about yourself. All right, uh, well, like George, I grew up in the San Fernando Valley, and for the most part, and uh, so I was there for many years, went to Taft High School, and then, um, then uh, graduated <clears throat> from, uh, from uh, Northridge, and, uh, was there, and then my first job was with the American Red Cross. And uh, so I was with the American Red Cross for 35 years and ended up here in Santa Barbara County uh, as the executive director of the Red Cross here in town. And uh, that kind of involved me in many other things, like George also. I don't know if you know this, George, but I also had, I had an avocado ranch for a while. <laughs> so I, down in San Diego County. So uh, that was kind of part of what I did for a while there too. Okay, great. So. And how did you get hooked into Rotary? That was when I first became executive director in Glendale, California. Uh, the, uh, one of the members of the Rotary Club there said, you have to join Rotary. And I, when I first came, and I said, why would I need to join Rotary? He <laughs> said, these are the people you need to know in town. You're new in town. They need to know you. You need to know them. Great. And that was in 1978. And so I've been with Rotary ever since. Good for you. <laughs> Good to hear. Well, let's jump into the uh, history of this. And you brought, by the way, a book uh, showing the 100 years. If you want to show that, Bill, um, to the audience there, quite an interesting mm -hmm. book. Who was in charge or involved with the writing of this book? Actually, George was, well, I did, I was the prime was person. Narrative part. Good for you. I had some help with mm -hmm. some other members on some of the visuals in mm -hmm. the final format. Okay. So um, I shared a PowerPoint, or got to see a PowerPoint that you guys had done for your uh, anniversary party. It was a great one. So we're going to mm -hmm. jump into that PowerPoint and take a look at it, starting with the first one, which shows uh, the banner, your club banner, along with uh, some of the history involved with that. So right. when was the banner portion of it, uh, the design done? Is that something fair? I'm not recent? absolutely sure of the date. Okay. I never have found that out. Okay. But as far as I know, well, I came into 1965, and that was the banner we were wow. using then. Wow. So I think it was well before mm -hmm. that, but I never heard of a date. Okay. Sounds good. It's uh, been a classic. I remember seeing this 
everywhere. I mean, <laughs> yeah, right. it definitely stands out, and it's a very nice banner. Next slide we have is uh, your first president, the founder mm -hmm. of the Santa Barbara Club. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was interesting to know the story of Jim Briscoe, the founder of our club. Jim had been a, a, a student in Berkeley and then had a business in Berkeley, or Oakland, I guess I should say. And when he moved his business to Santa Barbara, he had a, a ladies' dress shop on State Street. He kind of missed the fellowship that he'd had with his Rotarian friends in Oakland. So he started asking about forming a Rotary Club here in Santa Barbara. The first time he uh, got a letter back from Chicago from the president then that, uh, no, we're not going to grant you the, the opportunity to form a club because your town is too small. <laughs> you won't mm -hmm. have enough people to have enough variety members in your club. I think it was 13,000 people yeah, 13, at that time. Yeah, 13,000 members yeah, in, the, yeah. in the town. Yeah, they town. got it. <laughs> anyway, Jim Briscoe was very persistent. He kept writing to them, kept organizing, got a group of men that really were interested. And by the way, I should say, we changed our rules, and women are now very much a part of our club, but at the outset, it was all men. Mm -hmm. And so he got a group of men that would meet on uh, Friday noons at the famous old Arlington Hotel okay. for lunch. <laughs> and they uh, finally got uh, signatures and got uh, Chicago convinced that we had the makings. And so in the fall of 1917, they organized the club. They formed it with a, a constitution and a bylaws and a, had meetings and officers and board of directors and all the things, but the, the actual charter for the club was not granted by Chicago until January of 1918. Which is actually January 1st. Yes. January 1st, 1918, <laughs> right. That's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Although the club had already started for several yeah, months prior to that. it had been operating for three months, or two or three months already. <laughs> okay, so yeah. it took that long for the charter to go through. Great, we have a picture now of uh, Paul Harris. Uh, tell us yeah, a little bit about Paul Harris was the founder of Rotary, mm -hmm. a very famous man, and a, a man that uh, many people have admired through the years. Uh, he founded the first Rotary Club in Chicago. Uh, he was an attorney, if I remember right, right. and he uh, got some friends and neighbors together to have lunch every, day, every week. And that's out of that grew uh, the fellowship, which they finally taught, called Rotary. The, the term, the name, Rotary, came from Paul Harris because they rotated their meeting place. Right. They would have it at one person's place one week and then another member's place the next week. And so they rotated, and that's where the name Rotary came from. <laughs> Got it. It's taken on a lot more meaning since then, though. <laughs> that's very true. Now, another fascinating part of that is 1925. He had, yeah, 1925, of course, is a very famous year here in Santa Barbara, <coughs> the year of the earthquake. Mm -hmm. In April of, in 1925, about shook Santa Barbara apart. A lot of downtown was destroyed. But that same year, Paul Harris came to Santa Barbara and complimented our club on its help in recovery from the earthquake but also at the time of the children's uh, party. I don't know how many of you realize, but in the early days, like in the early 1920s, uh, one of the serious problems in our society was crippled children. We didn't know what caused it, but the children were crippled. And so we started the program as Rotarians, our first service project, to uh, try to aid these children. We not only had a, a various summer camps and picnics and, and financial assistance for their families and so on, but we also had a big Christmas party with Santa Claus. <laughs> All the kids got presents and so on. So Paul Harris came out in 1925, and he handed out the presents wow. as Santa Claus. Wow, for our <laughs> club. that is great. Good history right there. 
The next slide we had is of the uh, Boy Scouts, I believe. Yeah, the Boy Scouts were a part of uh, Rotary in our club for many, many years, starting out in 1919. Mm -hmm. uh, the club had raised $4,000, I believe, that year and uh, helped uh, start. That was the, the initial capital that started our Boy Scout mm -hmm. uh, organization for Tri County. Yeah, Tri County. Tri County. And I, I believe it was called the Mission Council. Mission Council, Mission Council. Uh, yeah. originally, yeah. and uh, so and a number of our members became board members of uh, of the Boy Scouts, and also were involved in troops. And, and uh, the club sponsored a troop for many years. Yeah, uh, many years, as I understand. So, yeah, yeah. it's interesting that the Boy Scouts office over uh, on an entrance to Hope Ranch mm -hmm. uh, is still there, and on that wall is a a frame with the original four thousand dollar check oh, yeah. in the frame. Wow! From the Rotary Club to the Boy Scout Council. Mm, never knew that. I've <laughs> never seen it actually. <laughs> it's fascinating. <laughs> Our next picture we have is of one of the presidents coming in here. Um, Fred, I believe it's Shower, I believe. Well, we had a number of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Fred Shower mm -hmm. was a very influential. Uh, attorney here in town, and he drew up the first uh, uh, history, gave us a lot of information about what happened in the early days. We have that, thanks to Fred Shower doing that for us. <laughs> Great. Uh, but uh, he also uh, uh, put a lot of zip into the club. He was an excellent president hmm. and became a, a, a leader in the community. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, next picture we have is a picture of actually showing some of the devastation from the earthquake in 1925. Yes. Um, and I believe that picture shows that <clears throat> we were meeting at the Arlington Hotel at that time. Right. And right. as George mentioned, uh, it was basically destroyed during, during yeah, the earthquake. Basically destroyed it. Yeah. And uh, so we had, a new pl we had to find a new place, and one of the members owned a lumber yard. And so that's showing that they met in a lumber yard <laughs> uh, in 1925. Wow. And my understanding is they never missed a meeting, even through that earthquake. Never missed a meeting. Wow. So it continued on. Amazing. For, but we had uh, box lunches at a lumber yard. <laughs> yeah. Got it. <laughs> okay. Um, we have the one now talking about you. And then we're going to jump into the next one, actually, is a photo of Norm Anderson. Well, Norm was a very influential mm -hmm. member of our club for many years. Uh, Norm is what we call Mr. Cheese. <laughs> he was representing the cheese industry of Wisconsin here on the West Coast, <laughs> but lived that. here in Santa Barbara at the outset. He moved to Santa Inez and uh, was elected as district governor for Rotary from the Santa Inez Club. But he'd been a member of our club and active for our, in our club for many years. Right. Norm's one of the great guys of Rotary. He is, yeah, a really nice guy. He's actually a member still, yeah. active member of the Rotary Club of right. Rosalitos. Exactly. And yeah. he came to our 100th anniversary he as did. well. He sat so with him. Great there. That was great. Um, now, let's see, we have uh, David Shower. Uh, picture him. Uh, well, David Shower was a printer. He was the one who wrote our first hub. Oh. We have a weekly newsletter that goes out to every mm -hmm. member. Uh, it started out in the mail, <laughs> but nowadays, of course, it goes on the internet. Right. <coughs> that hub has now experienced over uh, uh, 5,000 copies. Oh it's gosh. never missed a week of wow. giving information on our club. Wow. And uh, it, it's great. And David Shower was the one who wrote it and printed it for the first 20 or 30 years. Wow. He was elected uh, as our first Paul Harris Fellow when the Rotary International began awarding Paul Harris Fellows. Got it. And I believe he printed, he printed the hub for 70 years. Wow. 70 through years his, printed wow. through his own company. Before we switched yeah. to the internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Amazing. We have now uh, V.W. Uh, Sears, Joe Sears. Is, oh, uh, Joe Sears. He was a jokester. <laughs> Everybody loved the man. He was lots of fun. Uh, but he became the district president, district governor. Mm -hmm. And there's an interesting story mm -hmm. about uh, that he, uh, uh, 
that when he was going to, well, let me go back. Rotary has a tradition. When the district governor comes into office each July, he begins a process of visiting each of the clubs in the district. So he's got 70 clubs to visit now, is it, Wade? 72 now. Yeah. 72 <laughs> clubs. And so he has to go a couple of times a week to lunch someplace with somebody in one of the clubs. <clears throat> well, anyway, Joe Sears was the incoming district governor. So how does he come to his own club? So they organized this process of greeting the new district governor. So one past president started saying all the beautiful things about Joe Sears, and he turned it over to the next past president, and he said some more things, and he turned it over to the next past president. <laughs> they talked the whole half hour, and Joe <laughs> Sears never got to say a word. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> By the way, he did come back the next week and give his talk. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that happens with your home clubs. <laughs> yeah. Usually the roughest ones. Yes. Uh, next picture I have actually shows uh, you there, George, one of the past presidents. Well, I mm -hmm. felt that our club needed to do something more in the way of community mm -hmm. service. I didn't think we were doing enough. And I thought we ought to find out what our club members wanted. So we organized a series of neighbor uh, get-togethers, coffee hours, if you will. Uh, each of the Rotarians in a given area would attend a meeting in one of his neighbor's homes and talk to the neighbors and their wives and so on. But the subject for the club was, what can this club do to uh, help in this community? And out of that grew a prospect that there was a... a vacant land behind the boys club on the west side that was just weeds and dirt and trash and junk. So could we fix that up into a neighborhood park? So we decided that as a project and I started that and the club followed through. It took us, what, five years to get it finally done, wow. but we got it done. Wow. Yeah. And we presented it to the community and with the county, excuse me, the city park department to take his care of it now. But there's a nice neighborhood park behind the boys club. Beautiful park mm -hmm. there. Yeah, well maintained. And, uh, we mm -hmm. decided that we would do uh, that and name it for one of our famous Rotarians that was active in the city and that was Floyd Bonnet. Mm -hmm. So we call it the Bonnet Rotary Park okay. in honor of Floyd Bonnet. He had been mayor several terms, I forget how many years, and then he was our president and our district governor and so on. He also raised two sons that were members of our club. Oh, wow. So uh, Floyd was an influential man, and we decided to name the park in his honor. Okay, I'll oh, that park. Yeah. That and I think the club uh, donated $15,000 to buy the play equipment yeah, and so it forth it at that time, Yeah, it quite a too. bit of money to yeah. do that. We had a lot of work to clean it up. Yeah buy all the playground equipment and picnic ground equipment and so on. So. Very good. Um, next picture we have is your first woman member. Yeah. That, yeah. That. Uh, when Rotary International uh, first decided it would admit women to clubs, and this was a, a re result of many clubs asking for that for years before, uh, but when they finally decided, then we went ahead and invited our first member, and it was Karen Ramsdale, who at that time was manager of the city airport. Okay. Uh, Karen is still in the community and doing a lot of good work. She's president of the Genealogy Society now. <laughs> okay. Great. We have a uh, next picture is uh, Jim Johansson. Well, Jim Johansson is a great guy, and we wish him a lot of luck and lots of fun. He uh, is still uh, active, but in the Santa Inez Club. And, uh, yeah, and I think during his year he was president, that was the year that uh, polio came out as the major project. Yes, right. Yeah. During Jim's yeah. year, I think our club raised that first year 
$75,000 for Polio Plus. Wow. And now I think in the next couple of years, it was $500,000. Well, it's that right? a lot more than that. But I think that yeah. additional uh, was, you know, if you add all the addition through the years, it's probably that figure now. Yeah, that's amazing. Then uh, uh, George McClellan. Looks like he was a district George governor. was before my time. So, uh, <laughs> Just a bit. So the other George will have to 30, show you about him. 35 and 36, so uh, it was a while back. Yeah. George uh, McClellan was district governor in the early days. Mm -hmm. That's why his picture is in the You got it. You have quite book, a few so district mm -hmm. governors there. Yes. Um, you also have this, uh, let's see, Reuben Irwin. Yeah. Irwin. Irwin. Yeah. So Let me tell you a little bit about uh, Pete Scollin. Okay. Pete was president in... Uh, uh, 65, 66. Uh, Pete uh, made a deal with the president of the Bakersfield Club <laughs> to see if we could have some uh, successive meetings of perfect attendance. In those days, it was the goal of all Rotary Clubs to have perfect attendance, to have everybody present every week. So uh, Pete took on this a bet, and I think it was $5,000 or something mm -hmm. like that now. <laughs> anyway, so we had it, and in the fall of 1965, we had six consecutive meetings with 100% attendance. Wow. The poor guy who missed that seventh meeting <laughs> really got fired. <laughs> yeah. But that wow. beat Bakersfield. So we won the we won the prize. <laughs> good for you. That was good. Well, we, it looks like we covered most of. Uh, unless there's uh, somebody else special that you would like to bring up in the history um, of that, because we have probably another dozen or so. Um. Let me make mm -hmm. one comment about fines. I've mentioned that several times. At Rotary, we fine our members whenever they do something outstanding, like get a new car or get a promotion or something like that. But the idea is we're extracting money that belongs to those who we're giving it to in our donations, to people who need it. It supports our philanthropy. It's kind of a fun way to raise money. And so we find people, and a picture of Paul Planmunden in here for the reason that Paul was the first president that really started fining people. He started fining some people. Now, this is in 1965. He started fining people $100. And that was unheard of in Rotary, because usually it had been just put a dollar in the pot. Right, right. You know, but he gave him some heavy fines and was renowned for that. Now but I should say, yeah. parenthetically, that Paul talked with the member before he find them. Right, right, it right. wasn't a surprise to them. <laughs> good, good. Now your club is actually the very first club in our district, 5240 now, is 5524 mm -hmm. back in the day. Um, and you've established quite a lineage of leadership in that time. So um, tell us a little bit about what you've seen over the years, as far as your years in Rotary and the changes that have occurred. Well, I've seen a lot of change, of course, more in the community, I think, really, than in our Rotary Club, uh, and more in the philanthropies that we sponsor. Uh, the, our list is a huge list. I, I can't remember, maybe Bill can, how many different uh, uh, philanthropic groups we give funds to, but... Oh, donated funds to? Oh, it's, it's all the who's who's of, uh, of the Santa Barbara area. I mean, most of, the, most of the most of the nonprofits. At one time, have gotten a donation from the Rotary and that, Club. That's changed. We just started with a couple, like the Boy Scouts, and and early days of College Hospital and things like that. Yeah. But yeah. We there have are two a pages, or now. there's a page in this book of all of the ones that we've donated to. Right. So great. And uh, you've uh, actually created quite a milestone yourself. It's going to be almost impossible for most people to overcome, and that is your attendance. Yeah, we do mm -hmm. our share for the Rotary Foundation, which is. Uh, a philanthropic group, obviously. Mm -hmm. We have formed a separate uh, corporation in our, from our club so that our contributions to the foundation are deductible. It's a tax-deductible type company. Mm 
or organization. Right. Right. And uh, it also contributes heavily to Rotary International and its huge list of philanthropic sure. efforts. Sure. Uh, my question was also about your attendance. I understand you have perfect attendance for how many years now? Oh, I had perfect attendance for a few years, but I gave that up a few years ago. <laughs> <Did you? laughs> okay, good. Uh, I don't. I never wanted to dwell on that. Okay. okay. I think I enjoyed Rotary. Okay. I wanted to go, but uh, I didn't think we had to go every single week. True. And of course, our clubs don't require attendance Not anymore. anymore. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the reasons I brought that up. Um, a person like you that's been mm -hmm. involved with Rotary for so long, what kept you in it? Yeah, 53 years. 53 years, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was it because of um, what Rotary accomplished over the years that you stayed connected? I just it was in favor of what Rotary does. They were doing things in our community. They were doing things in the world for people who needed help. And uh, I wanted to be part of that. Good. Good. And I was happy to be a Rotarian. Great. That's outstanding. As we're, we're getting close to winding it down now, give me one reflection about Rotary, how, what you want to share with others that made it so special. Well, I think Rotary has done more for people. I've done some traveling, uh, consulting work in Africa and the Mediterranean and so on, and visited Rotary clubs and see what a tremendous influence they are in those communities. True. They, they do more for their communities relatively than we do for ours yeah, yeah, right. because there's so much to be done. <laughs> and I'm really impressed with that. Great. Well, George, thank you very much for joining us. I definitely appreciate that. And I'm sure the audience has too. Bill, thank you for coming along, helping us out with that. You're certainly welcome. And with that, we are going to close. Thank you, everybody. Take a look at the 100 years of Rotary in Santa Barbara and be proud of what we have done here in this area. With that, we'll see you next time.